No touch of gloves. We're going to get straight down to action here. Yeah, immediately looking to close the distance is Jesse and take this fight to the ground. You know, Aaron knows exactly how good Jesse is on the ground and expect to see him try and keep it standing. Unfortunately, finds himself in trying to type in that clinch, immediately finds himself on his back. Back into a butterfly guard position now. He has that front headlock. He's not really attacking anything with it, uh, but it's a good position to have to try and manipulate the upper body of the opponent, possibly. But, you know, as we've already said, Jesse is a legitimate high-level grappling purist before coming into MMA. So, you know, this is, this is a, you know, he, he's meddled at Europeans, you know, it, it, at Black Belt, adult Europeans, you know. Realistically, he's a international-level grappler. Khalid, of course, too, with, with the grappling background of his own, training at the Mat Academy and seven submissions in MMA. And obviously, we always say with, with mixed martial arts, everything changes with, when the strikes are involved and how Holland adapts to that is going to be telling here. Yeah, well, Jesse is turning this into a grappling match and Aaron's allowing it to happen. He looked to go for a Kimura here and in doing so, he's, he's made a potentially a very risky maneuver and given up his back now he needs to be very careful here because if jesse especially you know you have to bear in mind it's the first half of the first round when you get to a position here you're not going to be as slippery as you're going to be in the later rounds so this is a very dangerous position for aaron to be on if jesse is smart here mm -hmm. if he takes his time which i imagine he's going to do it's a, there's a very good chance that he's going to sink these hooks in beautifully done by aaron to get himself out of that bad back position here he has to be careful though he can't be turning in with these Kamura attempts and potentially giving up a back attack because if Jesse gets to a strong back position, especially with those long limbs, expect to him to lock off a body triangle and then you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Now, Holland told us earlier in the week that he was so grateful for the opportunity to showcase his skills here on Cage Warriors and obviously, you know, having a successful grappling career, making that transition, you know, a bit later than most people would do, it's a huge opportunity for him. Yeah, so Aaron does have that bite on that Kimura again. He's not in a great position, but at least forcing a reaction out of his opponent. And he releases it here, but you see, you know, it, it, it was very different to the first Kimura attempt because his body was in a much stronger position. He wasn't given the back from that half guard. And I imagine that he's going to be wanting to try and create some distance if he feels the opportunity trying to spin his opponent to get his opponent's back against the fence so he can create some distance. But Jesse doing a good job of dragging him back down to the ground into half guard position here. See what Holland can do for a more advantageous position here. And you can see he's getting to work on the ground and pound already. Yeah, well, you mentioned earlier during the walkout, you know, he does have plenty of wins by ground and pound. And the reason for that is, very simply, when you have a very high-level grappler, they know how to get into the best positions to be able to strike from. So, you know, it's, it's really one of the most beautiful things. People look at ground and pound very often as sort of a, a barbaric, sort of instinctive, just wailing on someone from on top. But when you see someone who is very skillful in the art of ground and pound with a good grappling background, an intelligent grappling and fight IQ, it's some of the most beautiful thing to watch. That combination of the striking and the grappling that's very, very unique to MMA. Again, Aaron needs to be very careful about giving up his back position. You know, this is something that you can do quite a lot against lower level grapplers, but when you have a high level grappler, it is a big risk. But, you know, Aaron is a very, very good grappler in his own right. And so far, even though he's on the back foot when it comes to the grappling, he's doing everything right to make sure that that Jesse isn't getting into a super dominant position. As I say that, he passes in the side control, Aaron seeing the opportunity and almost coming out the back door, back into a full guard position now. It's better to see him to try and use those legs to try and create some space. He wants to get back to his feet. He wants to get back to striking range here. You know, we said the average fight time for Khalid was uh, around eight minutes, but he has gone the distance twice with Ross Houston, so we know he is used to being in some bad spots and, and, and long toilet fights. Yeah, he has to be very careful here. There was a head and arm attempt, an arm triangle attempt that Jesse has switched into attempt for a Brabo here. He's got to be careful. The long arms of Jesse means that if he puts his head and arm in the wrong position, he might find out that he's in a lot of trouble. 
Both men still striking to the bell, but that's a big first round in this fight and a big first round in Cage Warriors for Jesse Holland. Dan, you've got to think his corner team are going to be more than pleased with that effort. Yeah, it, it, it was a really interesting, it was almost a feeling out round on the ground, you know. Jesse uh, did manage to get a couple of takedowns quite early on. He looked very, very comfortable, very controlling in those ground uh, exchanges. I think this is the first takedown, I believe. Body lock position, Aaron just connects his hands. Looked like he was going to go for a throw of his own, but ends up in a bad position. But Aaron did a really, really good job of escaping some pretty precarious positions, as we see here. This was the early Kimura attempts. You know, and almost giving up the back there, but he's able to reverse round and get back into a guard position. That's kind of what we saw the whole time. Almost uh, Jesse getting to a strong position and then Aaron being able to get back to a strong half guard, full guard position. Well, the seconds are out. Round two about to get underway. Aaron can lead Jesse Hall in. Gain no touch of gloves, wants to get straight down to business. Yeah, I imagine that Aaron's going to look the Oh, oh. it's a huge head kick by Holland. Khalid's gone down. The Holland looking to finish this fight here. Wow, what an incredible knockdown there and raining down the ground and pound. You know, I was going to say that Aaron's going to look to try and keep in striking range, but when you get worried about that takedown coming, a lot of the time you can get complacent, and he's got to be careful with that dos here. If he has that underhook and the uh, the right arm of Jesse comes around, look, he's looking for it. That arm's coming through. Aaron doing a good job of... Uh, here we see it again. I mentioned it earlier. Aaron doing a good job of stripping that grip. He cannot allow that left bicep to go around, the left hand to go around that right bicep. I think the Holland's cut here, Pat. I can't see where that's coming from, but... Yeah, there's definitely blood, and it looks like maybe on the, the right-hand side. Not sure what that would be from. But yeah, this, this is what, you know, this isn't where Aaron wants to be in the fight, but considering with the knockdown, giving him plenty of time to recover from here, the question is, can Jesse take advantage of this position, really get into a dominant position, almost a little chance to get to mount there and uh, see if he can try and get into a position to finish this fight? Well, if that was a bit of gamesmanship from uh, Holland there to, to come out and throw that head kick at the start of the round, that was absolutely majestic. Yeah, well, that, that's significant because when you're so worried about someone's grappling and then you realise that they can actually knock you you know, realistically knock you out, then that changes what goes on in your mind in every facet of the game. So uh, I definitely feel that the style that Jesse's grappling with, if we're going to see a submission here, it's very likely going to come in the way of um, a, a Brabo or a, a Doss. Just in the style that Aaron's playing, he's playing this half guard position, you've got the long arms, and we've seen a couple of attempts already. You know, obviously, if Jesse can get to a more dominant position, if Aaron does decide to, he really likes this Kimura attack from here. If he decides to try and go for it and gives up his back, then uh, obviously we could see a classic rear naked choke. But again, once again, we're seeing that Dar set up. And this time, this is the furthest he's got so far. Aaron's very aware of what's happening, but that arm is definitely coming through, and I think it's locked off now. Almost locked off, and Aaron doing exactly what he needs to do to try and escape there. But we're seeing this over and over again. Well, Khalid has got wins by Anaconda and Dars on his record as well. So it's been interesting to see those guys play the net game. Yeah, he absolutely knows what he's doing. And when you know how to attack a submission, you know how to defend it. And he's doing everything right. It's very much about where you move your body and stop the opponent from being able to get comfortable and lock off a position. So once again, we you know, very similar to what we saw in the first round. Very good positional dominance from uh, Jesse here, and Aaron doing exactly what he needs to do to not be submitted and to not have the mount taken, to not have his back completely taken. It looks to be somewhere in the right brow of Jesse Yahol in that cut. Doesn't seem to be causing too many problems though, but you know, with him being on, on top position, it's not really running down into the eye, so not really too much of a danger, but certainly something for the cut man to look at should this one leave the round. Yeah, um, Aaron getting a little bit lazy with this half guard position now. You see how the right leg of Jesse is just being able to pop straight over the thigh, the left thigh of Aaron. You know, th these legs are just a little bit too open for my liking. And if you can bring your leg out, you can bring your knee out and bring it over the leg, it does mean that you can pass the guard whenever you see fit. So 
Aaron's been utilizing this half guard position pretty effectively defensively so far. If he starts getting lazy with this, this could see an opportunity for his opponent to pass to a dominant position. Final minute of the round. And Holland looking to do more damage from top position. And this is as solid as a Cage Warriors debut as you're going to see. Well, apart from uh, Dominique Woody yeah. in, the, uh, in the last contest. Yeah, that was a, that was a pretty um, impressive show to try yeah, and follow. A couple more debutants still to come tonight. Justin Berlinson in the co-main event, a highly anticipated Cage Warriors debut. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Jesse Holland just keeping it slow and steady pressure here on Aaron Khalid. Yeah, Aaron once again looking to tie something up here. This head and arm looks pretty good. That is that is a nice position here. Aaron's sort of lucky that he's so close to the fence that Jesse's going to struggle to try and pass off to the side there. But with those long arms locking around, 10 seconds left, he's trying to get that shoulder in the face there. It doesn't look like it's tight enough. And as he releases the drops and strikes, and obviously he doesn't think it's tight enough. But this is significant. We've seen this multiple times from Jesse. And compared to the first round, that second round, Jesse is getting much closer to getting into finishing submission positions. Now, interesting enough, well, we said it might not have been that much of a problem, but as soon as he stood up, uh, Holland was scooping the blood out of his eyes there, so let's see what the cutman can do. John Tandy in the corner there, one of the top cutmen in the game. Going to go to work on that. Nick and yeah, just over the right brow of Jesse Holland. Here's the head kick to start the round. Bam, absolutely perfect. And fair play to Aaron Khalid for not going out from that one. Another look at that beautiful head kick. Khalid had fired one off to the left, but it was the head kick that did the damage there. Nice shots, and perhaps that's where the cut occurred. Those hammer fish from the bottom. Yeah, I, I, I don't remember any strikes from underneath from uh, Khalid, so I imagine that it had to be in that exchange. And here's the submission attempt at the end. You know, we saw, we saw a few pretty close. That 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 Dars attempt earlier was pretty close, and that head and arm looked pretty strong. So. You know, I wouldn't be surprised to see Jesse starting to ramp it up. If he can get his opponent on the ground again this round, ramping it up and trying to continue to throw submissions and hope something sticks. Yeah, do we even look at that as a 10-8 round? There was very little in the way of uh, comeback from Aaron Khalid there and obviously a big head kick and dominance on the ground. Yeah, I think you can make a really good argument. Oh, Khalid coming out like he's got work to do here. Throwing kicks, but uh, Holland immediately on the leg. Khalid trying to get the grip of the neck here. Yeah, went for a guillotine there, and maybe in the first couple of minutes of the fight, that would have been a much stronger position. But with the slipperiness of the sweat of the bodies going into his third round, he just uh, immediately slipped out of that. A small grappling exchange there as Khalid tries to uh, go for a sweep and end up both back on their feet. Be interesting to see now whether Aaron tries to break off here and go back to striking range or whether he actually tries to put his opponent on the back. This could be, uh, you know, an interesting strategy to try and take top position on the... Well, he, oh, nice man. spinning elbow there from Aaron Khalid. He certainly came after a hole in, in the opening moments of the round, but it's a hole in looking for the takedown again now and Khalid does not want to end up on his back here. Yeah, and Khalid once again trying to use that Kimura to lock up an anchor point to try and use this to get a position, but he has to be careful. If you grab onto that Kimura when the opponent's behind you, then you're going to give up your back. And, you know, it does look like, even though he's still doing everything right that he needs to to defend, as you get later on in the fight, it's going to slow down. And if he gives up the position here, he's not against the fence now. Anything that happens here, he's going to have to completely just use his grappling. You can see that right arm of Jesse coming underneath the neck, threatening that choke at all times. Yeah, beautiful positioning by Jesse here. He's looking to pass directly into Mount. You see how he's lacing his leg? He had all of his weight on the top leg of, of Khalid, and that meant that he could pass immediately into the Mount position. But once again, Khalid doing a good job of getting his hips out, getting the legs back on the inside. Expect to see him try and turn back into a half-guard position. This is what we've seen him do 
Almost looking for a uh, leg lock attempt there, but the leg wasn't there. And back into this half guard position. We talk about half guard all the time and the difference between half guard and grappling in MMA. Jesse absolutely 100% allowed Aaron Khalid to get back into half guard because it's a very good position to one, strike from, but more importantly for Jesse to actually go for what looks like to be some of his go to submissions, such as that Brabo. There's options for head and arm, there's options for even guillotine and Kimura, but mainly the one, the, the main one that we've seen, the only two that we've seen, is the DOS and the head and arm. Once again, looking to tie up that head and arm, and this time he's not so close to the fence that uh, he's gonna, that Khalid is gonna be able to use that fence to defend against the submission. So this is interesting now. You know, not massively relevant in and of itself in terms of the scoring, but certainly in terms of the narrative, close to 10 minutes of ground control for Jesse Uholland here. And that really has been the story of this fight so far. Yeah, it's a very, very dominant performance from the uh, from, 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 from the Finnish man. But, you know, you've got to give props to Khalid as well, who has done everything that he's had to do to stop, you know, to, to, to last 15 minutes on the ground, 10 minutes of grappling time against someone of the grappling pedigree of Jesse is pretty impressive in of itself. And a few submission threats from Khalid here and there, but, you know, Jesse just looking very much in control the entire time. 90 seconds left to play with for Aaron Khalid here. Yeah, you've got to wonder if, uh, you know, after 10 minutes of ground control and counting, whether Jesse's going to try and turn it on a little bit. You know, he hasn't been overcommitting to any of these submission attempts, but, you know, that's intelligent grappling. You don't overcommit. But at this point, is he going to try and turn it up? This is a strong position. The head and arm is there. What he wants to try and do, if he wants to get more pressure, he's got to get that leg out. He wants to get that leg out of half guard, and you can do that because you're anchored to the upper body. So you can throw those legs around more aggressively with no risk. If that leg comes out, expect to see him pass over to his left-hand side and drop his body down. If he can do that, this could well be a finish. He can tap from here, he can get the submission from here, but it's going to be much harder because of how high his body is due to the fact that he's still in half guard. And, you know, against someone who wasn't as good on the ground as Aaron Khalid, then maybe that would have worked. But if he wants to try and get the submission, he's going to have to do everything perfectly. Time is going to be the enemy here for either man. This is going to be a solid debut here, and oh, that was an elbow to the back of the head from Aaron Khalid, and referee Rich Mitchell's called time. Oh, and he's taken a point from Aaron Khalid as well. I mean, probably not going to mean a massive amount in the grand scheme of things, but you ought to watch the angles of attack and the targets of attack and those elbows. You know, and Aaron. Aaron's still fighting to the last second of this fight. Another Von Flu choke attempt here. Uh, but there we go, 15 minutes of action. And a measure of respect there between these two warriors. That was a hard fought contest. And another impressive debut performance here at the trilogy for Jesse O'Hollin. Yeah, Jesse really looked fantastic throughout, very much in control. Um, he's dyed his mullet a different color by the looks of it. Uh, but yeah, you know, this is, you know, some of the striking exchanges early on, and I believe he catches a kick or goes off of the kick and then back onto the ground. And this is sort of what happened the entire fight. We saw Jesse in very strong position, a, a, a lesser grappler as an opponent than Aaron Khalid, almost certainly would have seen one of these submission attempts stick in. Uh, but yeah, a, a very gutsy performance by both men, but very impressive from the, uh, the newcomer to the organization. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Aaron Khalid's one of the, the top grappling guys in the welterweight division here in Cage Warriors. Uh, I think Jesse Holland is going to give a lot of guys a lot of trouble on the ground if he can get them there. Well, let's throw it to our MC, Mr. Hal Chaplin, in the cage, and he'll make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of mixed martial arts action, we go to our judges' scorecards. Your judges' score is about 30-25, 30-25, and 30-26. In favor of your winner, by way of unanimous decision, in the blue corner, Jesse Aaron Holland. <laughs>
Jessica Holland with a big win there. A couple of 10 8 rounds, as we suspected there might be. And what a way to announce yourself on Cage Warriors with a big victory of one of the most.